hollow, you could learn a little something. Would you like to follow? They're pulling you left, but you might want to go right. Let's take a little trip and it could shed some light. If you don't agree with our point of view, you don't have to make a big to-do. Just watch another video. Who's stopping you? We're not trying to tell you what to do. Hello fellow Americans! Thanks for joining me for another exciting and informative episode of Adventures in Snorling's Hollow, where we teach you lessons and values from a conservative point of view. I am your host, Mimsy Moon, and I just saw Piper out in her yard. Looks like she was putting up some new decorations. Let's go get her. Oh, Piper! Your friends and I wanted to come and get you for the show. Oh, hi! I've been busy. How do you like my new fall decorations? Oh, they're great. You sure do have a talent for decorating. Thank you! So, are you ready to come and do the show? Absolutely! Pick me up! Okay, well, I would like to officially welcome your co-host Piper to the show. Hi, everybody. So what's today's show going to be about, Eminem? Why are you calling me Eminem? Oh, Mimsy Moon. Okay, I get it. Because I just saw your rap video. You gotta be kidding me. You didn't like it? Are you asking me if I like racism? and cultural appropriation? Uh, well, if any of our friends haven't seen it, I think it turned out pretty good, so go check it out. Or don't! Piper, you're not being a very good co-host. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, Mimsy, what have you been up to today? Well, I've just been reading and replying to some of the comments I've been getting on the show. Ha, huh, let me guess. People are being mean to you, aren't they? What did you expect? I know, I'm not surprised, but I still don't have to like it. Some people are nice, but some people can be really brutal, and I'm not sure what I've done to inspire such venom. It's because you're conservative. Denounce your bigoted ways and come over to our side, and then we'll leave you alone. What do you mean, we'll leave you alone? Were some of those comments from you? Um, what? Me? Hmm. Anyway, no. I truly believe in everything that I say. I believe that conservative values are good for individuals and for our country as a whole. And I'm going to stand up for what I believe in no matter what some people might say. Okay, but you're asking for it. Asking for it? But why? What I've learned from conservatives has really helped me and my family turn our lives around. And I want others to have the same opportunity to find out if conservative values might be right for them too. But white supremacist fascist Nazis must be stopped at all costs. If you want to spread your hateful ways, we will scream and threaten you and fight you in the name of love and acceptance. Do you hear yourself? Y'all have been misled. The media is owned by the Democrats. They want Trump to lose the election, so they do everything they can to make him and anyone who supports him look as bad as possible. They've always shown Republican presidents in a negative light. But they really ramped it up this time because Trump isn't your typical politician and he doesn't play by their rules. And with all his talk of draining the swamp, He's a real threat to their power. They're even going as far as highlighting any story that makes cops and even our great country as a whole look racist, when this is among the least racist countries in the world. The mainstream media has become the propaganda arm of the Democratic Party, posing as unbiased journalism. It's all part of their agenda and it's working, but it's ruining the country because now y'all think we're evil and that you're fighting for your lives. 
But the fact is, we're just regular people who mostly want the same things in life that you do. Happiness, fairness, equality, success. We just have a different ideas on how to get there. And this used to be okay. There have always been Republicans and Democrats. We've always had disagreements. But the media and y'all have taken something that used to be normal and turned it into a life or death battle. But, but conservatives hate LGBT plus people and black and brown people and you want to take their rights away from them. Piper, nobody feels that way. Maybe years ago, conservatives may have been more bigoted, but that's not who 90% of us are today. Today's conservatives are tolerant and we don't care about your sexual orientation or the color of your skin. Many of us would have been considered liberal just 10 years ago, but many liberals have gone so far to the left that we no longer identify with them and we've kind of switched sides. And in reality, the average conservative is way more tolerant of you than you are of them. And I know you don't want to hear this, but much of the aggression coming from the right is a response to the aggression coming from the left. I mean, we don't want to start something. Most of us just want everyone to chill out. But how long can we be expected to stand by before we end up standing up for our country? And when I say right, I'm excluding the white supremacists. As far as I'm concerned, they are the worst of all and they are not on the tolerant conservative side. They only hurt our case because people think that they represent us. Whatever you need to tell yourself to get through the day, Mimsy. But don't the negative comments tell you everything you need to know about yourself? Well, they actually say much more about you than they say about me. What are you even talking about, Mimsy? I'm talking about bullying. There are thousands of people posting videos on YouTube that I don't agree with, but I've never felt the desire to go into their comment section and attack them personally. It's okay to disagree and state your case, but what is going on out there right now is just shallow nastiness. And I'm not just talking about people on the left here. You know what they say, hurt people hurt people, and it's true. Bullies are people with low self-esteem who are in a personal pain and they want to project that pain out to others to make themselves feel better. In fact, I have a special guest today who would like to discuss this very subject with you. And I would like to welcome my lovely daughter, Paisley Lane. Hello friends, Paisley Lane here. Let me start by telling you a little bit about myself. I'm a mother, a wife, a sister, a daughter, and like my mother, a newfound conservative. Every day I wake up and I make a choice. How do I want to see myself? How will I choose to view the world? This topic is something I feel passionately about and I am so grateful to be able to share my views with all of you watching today. I don't believe in coincidences. There is a reason that you're all here today. Whether you call it fate or divine intervention, I pray that my words open your mind and help to heal your soul. I want to talk about a problem that I see all around me. Maybe it's a problem that you might share and that has an impact in your life or that you see in others around you. Maybe it affects the way you think, the way you feel, and even the way you behave. And what is it? It's self-esteem or maybe more accurately, low self-esteem. The definition of self-esteem is an individual's subjective evaluation of their own worth. Let me put it another way. It's simply how we view ourselves or how we evaluate ourselves. It's how we judge ourselves or how we place value on ourselves and our own worth. So you have to ask yourself, what information have I acquired on myself over the course of my lifetime? Maybe my parents divorced and I blamed myself and as a result began viewing myself negatively. Maybe they were never together or I didn't even know my father, therefore started seeing myself as less than others. Maybe my family didn't have a lot of money and I didn't have nice clothes compared to some of the other kids. 
These things and any number of other scenarios could have lowered my self-esteem over time. And maybe as I got older, I allowed my disappointments to define me and those voices I heard around me became my own. You're too slow. You're too fat. You're not good at that. You're not pretty or smart enough or whatever. This creates a shattered image of the person looking back from the mirror. Now I go out into the world as someone who is suffering inside, someone who has trouble connecting, who has lowered standards and values, someone who has lowered expectations of myself and of others. I and I alone have created a victim and a victim is a dangerous person. I am now weak, spiritually lacking and dependent on others. Now coming from this place of lacking, I expect very little from myself because in my eyes, have I already failed? Or perhaps instead I become an overachiever to prove to myself and to others that I have worth or but even when my goals are achieved, I still feel less than because I can't recognize it when my goals are accomplished. My low self-esteem has caused me to be unable to receive praise or recognition. I can't take a compliment because deep down, I don't believe it's true. I don't know what's worse, never trying for fear of failure or succeeding and still feeling like a failure. So my friends, we have uncovered the problem, one that hurts us and holds us back and even it's painful for people close to us to watch. So what are we gonna do about it? Well, I wouldn't just present a problem without offering a solution. What if I told you that all the negative beliefs that you hold inside your mind have all been a lie? What if I told you that you could change your whole life today by changing one thing? What is that one thing you may ask? It's your perception, your, your height, your weight, your looks, your skin, your clothes, your neighborhood, your parents, all of the opinion you've developed about these things, all of the names they've called you and the worst names you've called yourself. It was never who you are. It was all an inaccurate information given to you by people who were unwell themselves. The choices that I make every day is to love myself as I am with all of my perfect imperfections and my wish is to hand you those same rose colored glasses. I want you to truly love yourself and treat yourself with respect, dignity and kindness to take care of yourself and place a new value on yourself to allow yourself to step out in faith and make courageous and sound choices. I challenge you to learn the lessons of your past. Be honest with yourself about what isn't working in your life and take steps to correct it. Are you spending too much time online or playing video games? Or maybe you find yourself being mean and feeling angry or addicted to drama. It doesn't have to be this way. You can take a leap of faith and start anew. Tell yourself that you are worth it, that no one is lesser or greater than anyone else, that you are capable of anything. Choose not to listen to the lies and feed into the negativity. Choose positivity and project it outside of yourself to the rest of the world. Look at all that you have in this life instead of concentrating on what you don't have and be grateful. Forgive your parents and realize that they are just imperfect human beings who have been hurt too. Believe that God gives his toughest battles to his greatest warriors. Look for lessons and the bigger picture. Ask yourself, how can you bring light, love, and a smile and laughter to even the most negative among us? Shatter the preconceived notions they might have of you. Ask yourself how a perfectly imperfect you can make your little piece of the universe a better place. Feel empowered. Know that you were made for so much more than being defined by all the circumstances and situations that are out of your control. And let it go. Let it heal and move forward towards the rest of your life. You alone have the power to change your whole life around, not some outside force. Change comes from within and love comes from within. You are the answer. Look no further than the person looking back at you in the mirror. With your brown skin or your light skin, your freckles or your crooked teeth, 
Let all that light shine through. Whoa, I just got goosebumps. Hey, I can feel the difference in you already. <laughs> I just want each and every one who hears this to know that you're not alone. Look around you, at school, at the grocery store, walking down the street. These are your brothers and sisters, and we are all, all in this thing called life together. But if you're searching for that one special person that will change your life, take a look in the mirror. If you enjoyed our talk today, keep coming back because I always have a lot to say. And if you'd like to send me a message to the email address in the description below, I'd love to hear from you. Bye everyone. Paisley signing off. <laughs> so, what did you think about Paisley's message? I know how you sneaky conservatives work. Just when we let our guards down, wham! We're living in a handmaid's tale. Are we going to Snorling's Hollow today or what? Well, I don't know. This episode's getting a little long already. You can't call the show Adventures in Snorling's Hollow if there's no adventure and no Snorling's Hollow. Just skip the real talk segment today. Okay, that'll work. To the lamp. Okay, Mimsy, do your thing. How about you do it today? Oh, okay. I am Madame Fupa. Look deep into the lamp. No, not that. I want you to do the whole thing. I want this to be your adventure in Snorling's Hollow. What? Really? Sweet. Okay, I got this. Talk me in. Look deep into the lamp and let your imagination take you away to another dimension. A magical and an enchanted realm. So, so there was an election and Stump lost. Oh, his opponent Lizzie Warflin won? Yeah, sure. Lizzie won. If you'd like to know more about the election in Snarling's Hollow, buy my books, link below. Are you through? Proceed. So the new president is a Democrat. There aren't any Democrats in Snorling's Hollow. They're called the Raccoon Clan. Ugh, okay, so the raccoons won and they could finally do all the stuff they wanted to do. Oh my, what did they do? Well, they made me the vice president and we immediately tore down the fence on the border and we let in everyone who wanted to move to Snorling's Hollow. Then we made all the rich beings give us the money to take care of everyone so they didn't have to work if they didn't want to. Yeah, and, uh, and then we abolished all of the police and made everyone give us all of their weapons and we threw them in a big fire. And we got rid of gender and everyone just did whatever they wanted. And then we made hate speech illegal so that if anyone had a problem or said anything mean to us, they would go to jail. But I thought you abolished the police. Uh, okay, well, we have drones or something that they can hear you and then they fly down and grab you and throw you in jail. Eesh. So I guess you got this all figured out then. Yep, easy peasy. And everyone lived happily ever after? Yep. For how long? Forever. May I? What do you mean? I have a few predictions for your utopian society. Ugh, like what? So, all of the rich beings got tired of giving away all of their money and they moved out of Snorling's Hollow. With no one left to support them, all of the Snortlings tried to get jobs, but with all of the overcrowding, there just weren't enough jobs to go around. The government raised everyone's taxes, but most of the hardworking beings had already left town because they were tired of getting abducted by drones. So there just wasn't enough money to support everyone. Beings needed to feed their families, so crime was on the rise. And with an open border, no police and an unarmed population, violent gangs came in and took over. And with the remaining population being gender fluid and queer, 
there just weren't any strong manly men to stand up to them and well that was the end of Snorling's Hollow. Oh, Nimsy! You ruin everything! That wouldn't happen. That's exactly what would happen. Well, I'm going home. Well, don't let the door hit you in the butt on the way out. <laughs> Just kidding. Love you. Bye. Boy, this episode ran long. So, if you like what I'm doing, please support me. I've got books, merch, and a raffle club you can join. Links are below. And don't forget to like, share, hit notifications, and subscribe. And now, it's time for the goodbye song. Goodbye, farewell to you, my friends. Until which time we meet again. We've talked about a lot of stuff, like being fair and being tough. Be brave and see what you'll achieve if you stand by what you believe. Bye, friends. <laughs>